Welcome back. Well, we've just heard the government's perspective on some of those matters, particularly concerning education and guns, which we just threw in because the previous guest owns a gun. But as is becoming increasingly clear these days, the government's agenda is very much in the hands of the Senate, the minor parties. One of those senators who will no doubt have plenty to say about industry getting involved in education and the current in Senate inquiry into guns is Green Senator Lee Rhiannon. She joins us now from our Sydney CBD studio. Welcome, Senator. Hello, Janine. Firstly, I should uh, let you, you uh, took exception to some of the comments of Senator Bridget McKenzie on your gun policy. I must admit I did not know this would be an issue of uh, such debate, but if you could just sh sum up where she was wrong, and is there a push to actually relax our gun laws? Is that what we're talking about? Oh yes, there has been. It's quite disappointing that 1996 we have the terrible Port Arthur massacre and then in the following year, and it's to credit obviously I'm quite critical of the former Prime Minister John Howard, but on gun law reform it was one issue that he got it right. And that's why it's disappointing to see coalition members like um, Senator McKenzie really out there undermining that work. But where... she wasn't. To be fair, Senator, she said she would be happy to see the status quo, to see the laws where they are. Now, it does seem that this is a Greens initiated inquiry, but I would have thought most people would be happy at least if we leave it where we are. What's the problem with that, given no, that the data no. you've got hasn't supported it so far for any change? Look, the, the key thing is here, the work um, out of Port Arthur was critical and what we achieved was a ban on semi-automatic long arms. So why change the laws? Because what we didn't achieve, and that was recognised at the time, was the all-important ban on the semi-automatic short arms, the pistols. They're the ones that obviously favoured by criminals, they're easy to hide. Uh, and that's where I am disappointed that the Nationals, and really why they're doing this, Janine, is that they're losing votes to the Shooters and the Fishers Party. So that's why you see people like Senator McKenzie regularly speaking and working on this issue. And it really is to, to the detriment of public safety. I do think it's uh, fascinating to have two female senators fighting over gun laws, something you'd usually expect was a traditional, um, you know, the old Nat style, but she knows her stuff. You would assume she comes from the country. She's talking for farmers. That's not a new position for Nats, is it? Well, and also she was very wrong about the Greens' position. We do not deny farmers their use of guns. We do not deny it as an Olympic sport. That has not been our position. Okay. And, like, it's just... They, should, they don't need to say that. OK. Well, as I say, I do think probably most Australians are pretty happy with the status quo, but that will be a debate for another time. Let's get into education. It's one of your portfolio areas. There's an awful lot going on at the moment in mm. this area. Let's just get to the competitiveness issue. I mean, I had a few cracks about the McDonald's schools and whatever, but as the Senator pointed out, it's only a small, uh, a small scoping study, I think, at the moment, a small experimental look. Um, really, in the scheme of the budget for education, is this really a worry? Oh, look, I think it's something that we need to watch very closely, uh, like uh, bringing um, businesses into our schools, having a say on curriculum, would be a very serious setback in terms of the quality of education in this country. Uh, the, the job of a business is to make money for their shareholders, for their owners. They also do a lot of philanthropy and a lot of community projects. There's the triple bottom line, it's called, looking after your community. Yes, but their first job, and that's what they're required to do, is to make a profit. Whereas, the, obviously, when you come to education, it's providing um, that your students with a good quality, well-rounded education. And when you look into this, and particularly when you have these links between companies and schools, those companies are getting um, a link um, and uh, there's the training that can result, which can result in those students ending up with a very narrow um, course structure, whereas in fact in this day and age we know most students are going to have many careers, a lot of jobs, and they need to have a diverse curriculum Senator that Rianne, prepares them for that. Of course a lot of this all comes back to funding, budgets, money. The fact is at the end of the day the government in power has the right, and everyone does, to put in an education policy. The main stumbling block is the Senate and you're part of that Senate and the green agenda that seems to be just saying no to everything. Where are we at in the education reforms put in by the government that was voted in? 
Well, firstly, to unpack a few of the things that you've just said there, it's, um, yes, the Greens have a position in the Senate, and we certainly don't just say no. We're very constructive in how we undertake our work. But it's not just the uh, what's going on in the Senate. The widespread opposition is growing to the very damaging policy that this government has on education. 30 billion cut out um, of our schools funding, 5 billion cut out of our higher education funding. I also sat on the inquiry that Senator Mackenzie spoke about and uh, I had understood that many of the vice chancellors were um, in agreement with uh, Minister Pine and while that's the case there was more in opposition than I had realised there would be. Very excellent evidence from the students who are the ones whose you know, very career is now under threat. I'm going to do something radical here because we could sit here all night talking about what you don't agree with. How about you tell me, is there, because you said you're not the party of no, just in the education budget proposals, is there any part of what Education Minister Pine has proposed or uh, Mr Hockey's put in the budget, are there any parts you're prepared to pass that you do agree with? Oh, look, the bill, the bill in its entirety has to go. We need to start In entirety, attention. there's in nothing. Its entire, look, no, Throw yeah, the lawyer. No. <laughs> well, Janine, <laughs> like we say many things in life there's bits of it but like the when you look at the whole package we have to start again because what remember what this is built on it's built on removing five billion dollars from our public okay. universities about giving 500 million to private for-profit companies to make money out of education that's not the way to build an innovative nation now, They've got it wrong. I notice you're also on the international aid and develop. You speak for international aid and development, um, and I want to just get to the situation in the Middle East. The Greens have been outspoken that we've got bipartisanship, uh, Labor, and the coalition on what we're doing in Iraq. Um, I just wanted to know to ask you what you would do, what the Greens' position would be at the moment to stop a threat that is obviously growing worse. We've got stories at the moment in Kobani of of hundreds they're talking could be up to hundreds of headless bodies what if the greens don't support what we're doing what do you propose to stop this threat Oh, look, I agree. The threat is horrendous. The suffering must be so extreme. Uh, but the, going in and engaging in another war, in another round of bombing, like that's not the solution. Uh, Janine, what we, is the solution then? Well, I think that's a, you know, that's a really hard question. I acknowledge that. But really, let's look at what Australia has done in Afghanistan, what we've done in Iraq, along with other Western countries. We have made these states dysfunctional functional. We have really created a lot of the conditions. Going in there and creating another war isn't the solution. Well, actually, we're not creating the war. The war is already there and public opinion pretty well is that sometimes something is so horrific and such a threat to the world that you just can't sit idly by. Is that the Greens' position? Isolationism? Just stay here and hope it won't get here even though there's evidence of wood? No. Look, our position certainly is an isolationist. What, what you should link into this story is that at the beginning of this year, the Australian government ended all its aid, all its overseas aid to Iraq. Now, not long after that decision's made, we hear from Prime Minister Tony Abbott telling us that what we're doing in um, Iraq is humanitarian. That was before we learned that the fighter planes are going in. So it's presented that it's humanitarian, but now we learn that they actually cut the aid program. I acknowledge this is very difficult. Yes, we need to engage. It's not isolationist. We need to be working with these people, not fighting um, and engaging in bombing. Just on that issue of cutting aid, um, many people now think the Ebola threat is probably even a bigger yes. world threat. Do you think Australia is doing enough um, world to help the global push against the Ebola crisis? No, not at all. And it's a, a very important question to come immediately after what we've just discussed, because there has been many requests for there to be uh, on the ground assistance in building the isolation units um, to assist with the transport, as well as with health professionals. And the Australian government has been extraordinary in how lax and slow it has been to respond to what now is a, a very serious crisis. Clearly, the World Health Authority authorities are worried how it's going to spiral out of control. That's where we could be making such a valuable com contribution. And it's worth noting, Janine, the four countries who are really held up as an example of what we should be doing are Britain, 
China, Cuba and the United States. An interesting combination. We should be there with them. Okay, thank you very much for your time tonight, Senator Lee Rhiannon. Thank you, Janine. And after the break, we'll be talking to an advocate for um, a spokesperson for Mus Muslim women in this country, somebody who uh, we get, they get a lot of criticism. It's a very fractured group when the Muslims speak and everybody puts them in one group. But there are different groups and this is a very impressive lady.